Thank you so much, Dad, for that introduction. And I'm always just grateful for our church. I'm so grateful that I have a home church where I'm able to just minister and just have time here. And, you know, I, I love even just what I'm able to do just as a youth pastor here, you know, as I travel and I go and I minister to young people all over the nation. My heart is always here for our young people. And I, I made it my own personal endeavor that I will never give out there what I haven't already given here. And so I'm very committed to doing that. And so I'm just grateful for all of you. I'm grateful for my father and just, he is such a great coach. He helps me so much. And I trust him. I trust him with everything that I have to do. I know he has so much experience, and I am so young, but yet God has, got, God has called me to do what I do. And so him just coaching me and all the time that we have together, it's just I'm so grateful for that. And so I'm so grateful that I'm able to be here with all of you this morning and minister this new series that we're going to dive into on the Holy Spirit. This series is called The Holy Spirit Revealed. And this is going to be such a powerful series that we're going to go in that's really going to help all of us just as a church really come to know God in a different way through the Holy Spirit. And as I talk about this this morning, I really want to talk about it in the sense of him just being revealed within our lives because we have learned or known about the Holy Spirit for how he moves and what he does, but we haven't talked a lot about the Holy Spirit with who he is within our own personal lives. And so this is going to be so good. Today I'm going to give you an introduction of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that coming to know him, it's just going to change your life. Again, not, because, not only because of his power, but because of his personal friendship that he wants to have with you. And so as I share this today, I'll be sharing a lot of what I experienced and what I encountered with the Holy Spirit and what I'm continuing to encounter with him because life with the Holy Spirit, you just every single day, every single moment, you learn so much about him. I was even having some time this week as I was preparing for this, just learning more things about him. So I'm so filled as I come to you today, but we're going to do a little inter uh, introduction on him today and then over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about the personhood of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the friendship of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit as the revealer of Jesus. And so we're going to get in this today. Let's just pray first and invite the Holy Spirit to be with us. Holy Spirit, we just thank you just for who you are. We acknowledge you right now, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge you as the third person of the Trinity. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to your people. For those that have not come into the full knowledge and revelation of who you are, I ask you to reveal yourself. For you are the one who is called to be close to us. You are here with us right now. I thank you that eyes of understanding would be opened and that hearts would be flooded with light. Lead, guide, and direct this time of ministry in Jesus' name. And Everyone said, amen. I want to take you to the word of God as I begin to minister this morning to give some biblical context as to what I'm going to be sharing with you so you understand what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit and then just laying a foundation again of who he is and how he relates to us within our lives. I want you to go to John chapter 14 verse 26. In the King James Version it says this, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the Father sent the Son Jesus here on earth and Jesus as he once he was raised from the dead he then ascends into heaven and he says I am going to send you the Holy Spirit. So we already see the Trinity at work here. The Father sending the Son, Jesus sending the Holy Spirit. And as the Holy Spirit is here with us, Jesus is telling us all of who he's going to be. He is not just the Spirit of God, but there is so many more attributes and characteristics about him and descriptions that you need to know about. In the amplified version of what we just read, John chapter 14, 26, it says this, but the comforter, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, our standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things and will cause you to recall. He will remind you of and bring to your remembrance. 
remembrance everything that I have taught you. Do I want you to see that on the screen? Oh, that the Holy Spirit is. He is your comforter. He is your helper. He is your intercessor. He is your advocate. He is your strength. He is the one that you call on when you need someone to call on. He is everything to you. He is the representative of Jesus Christ himself here on earth today and within your life. That's the Holy Spirit. If you believe it, shout amen. amen. That's the Holy Spirit. I want to take you now to 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. In the NIV, it says this, May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Again, I'm trying to help us see the trinity of God, that God is three persons in one. They are all God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are all God, three persons in one. They are the same in nature, in, eff- in, nature, in essence, yet different in assignment. So they are all the same. They're three in one. They're the same in nature and essence in all divinity. But they are different in their assignment. They were all called to do different things. And you're going to see what the Holy Spirit was called to do. Go ahead and go to the message version of 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. It says, the amazing grace of the master Jesus Christ, for we're saved by grace through faith. That's Jesus. The extravagant love of God, for God so loved the world that he sent his son. The intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. So the Holy Spirit, he was called to be our friend. And a lot of times we don't talk about the Holy Spirit as our friend. We talk about him as a spirit or just a movement or we see him in different ways, which he he has been manifested in different ways as a dove or fire or wind or, or breath or whatever it is. Now, he can manifest in those ways, but he is also a person. He is our friend. Holy Spirit in the Greek is called parakletos. That means the one who is called to be close to you. So let me break something else down really quick that's so good when you come to understand this. So many times people think that we have to draw close to the Holy Spirit, that we have to chase after the Holy Spirit, that we have to pursue and run after the Holy Spirit. That's actually not true. His assignment here on the earth is to be close to you. His assignment here on the earth is to draw near to you. His assignment here on the earth is to pursue you and to chase after you. What we do is we must acknowledge, we must recognize, we must listen, we must obey, we must come to know who he is. But his assignment is to be close to us. He's the one that draws us to Jesus. He's the great convictor. He's the great revealer. He's the great puller. He's the great beckoner. He's the one that brings us into the knowledge of who Jesus is. So don't think that you found God. God found you. The Holy Spirit came running after you so that way you can know who Jesus is, receive his life, and give your life to him. Somebody shout amen right now. The Holy Spirit is so good when we come to find all that he is. Lastly, here in the word of God, I want to take you to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. This one is one of my favorites. This, this is one of the verses that it has changed my life and is continuing to change my life to know really who the Holy Spirit is. Now, many of us have heard this verse in the King James Version. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. So we see there, but a lot of times we we skip over by his divine power and the knowledge of him that has called us. This is where we see in the message version who is the one that has the divine power and has called us. Go to the message version. It says here, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God, the Holy Spirit. Now, this verse changed my life, and as I said, is continuing to alter my life. Thank you for that. Because I'm someone, as probably many of you are, someone that wants to please God. 
someone that wants to live my life for God. Someone that wants to do right in every area of my life. I want to do right within my own personal life. I want to do right within my relationships. I want to do right within the way I act. I want to do right within the things that I say. I want to do right and please God. Now, many times we can get stuck in this place of just try, 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 pushing ourselves. And we find ourselves trying to, thank you, Holy Spirit, trying to engage God through the flesh. You will only, listen here, you will only go so far engaging God in the flesh. And many times we do that. We think that if we push a little harder, we think if we shout a little louder, we think if we cry a little bit more, and I'm, 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 I'm just as guilty of doing that and guilty at times of preaching that, that come on, you got to push harder. But you actually, this is where when you, when, as the Holy Spirit reveals himself, you learn you actually can't do any of that without him or else it's meaningless. Let me give you an example. I'm sharing some different stuff here at the 10 a.m. than I did at the 8 a.m. I had a moment with the Holy Spirit one time where I was, uh, I was talking to the Holy Spirit or he kind of was revealing to me a little bit of my relationship with him. And I said, you know, Holy Spirit, I'm like, I am one that I will just shout, Jesus, I love you from the rooftops. And you know me, I am very passionate. I am very radical. I will just scream and shout and yell and jump and dance and run. I will do it all and I don't care. I don't care what anybody thinks. I- I'm radical about God. But I I had a moment of realness with the Holy Spirit, and he revealed to me, he's like, yes, you'll do that. But you don't take a lot of time in my presence sitting there saying, Jesus, I love you. And I said, you're right. And And he said, I know. He said, he said, you only yell to those that are far away from you. When he said that to me, I was almost like, hold up, Holy Spirit. Hold up. You, what are you trying to say here? You're only, you only yell to those that you're trying to, hey, Jesus, do you hear me? And the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm right here. I'm right next to you. Don't try to blow past me to something that's not even there when I'm right here with you and you can just look over to me and say, I love you. See, this is the personal, intimate friendship of the Holy Spirit that he is trying to bring us into. See, that is the difference between walking in the flesh and walking in the spirit because you could be doing all the Christian things and loving God, but it's all in the flesh. Therefore, it's not bearing any spiritual fruit. We must learn to include, invite, and acknowledge the Holy Spirit so that way we can walk in the Spirit and reap the fruit of the Spirit. It is only through him. And this is going to take a lot of renewing our mind. This is why I'm just giving an introduction. And I'm actually going to share with you some things that I have learned through just different encounters that I've had. I've actually, the way I prepared my message is I actually went back to my notes from my encounters. I would literally write down my encounters with the Holy Spirit and things he would speak to me. And he compelled me to go back to my notes and actually pull my personal encounters to prepare my message today because I want you to connect with me in this. I don't just want this to be a teaching of the next thing you have to do in your Christian walk now. That's not what this is. Okay, here's the next thing. You want to go to a deeper place? Okay, here's next steps. No, no, no. That's just, that's so many times we get a lot of practical stuff, which we need, but we also have to know how to engage the spirit and how to engage the spirit. Hear me when I say this, it is by the spirit. You engage the spirit by the spirit. I'll say this quickly. If anyone has ever listened to Mike Bickle, I remember a lot of times I would get very, and if you've listened to him, you know what I'm going to say, tripped up when he says, the only way to love the father is by knowing how the Father loves you and knowing how the Father loves Jesus and the Holy Spirit reveals how Jesus loves the Father and you can love him that way. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Mike? Like, what is going, what do you mean? It's like this, he's like, yeah, we're getting into the love triangle of God. What is happening? 
but it makes sense now. Like, I get it. I'm like, I get it, Mike. I get what you were saying. The Holy Spirit. You can never pursue God, love God, engage God, or engage in the Spirit without the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is even going to help you learn how to engage him. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Come on, somebody. He's the helper. <laughs> he is the helper. He is our intercessor. He's so good. And this is the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to give you some practical things at the end of some confessions that you can do. That's going to help you to just start engaging the Holy Spirit. But first, let me give you a couple points this morning of things that I have learned about the Holy Spirit just through some of my personal encounters. The first thing is I have learned to be grateful for the Holy Spirit. He leads us into all truth and loves us. He leads us into the truth of God's word and he reveals himself to us. He guides us out of our sin and the life that we were living. He directs our paths to the life that he has prepared for us. Keep going. He brings us into fully living. He directs us to Jesus who came to give us life and life more abundantly. The Holy Spirit being revealed to you is like living for the first time. He's our helper and our comforter. I, I remember when that clicked in my mind of it is like I'm, I, I, I literally, I was in my car one time listening to a song and it said it's like I'm living for the first time. And the Holy Spirit showed up in that moment and I began to just weep and cry and began to think, I don't even know how I was living life before coming to know the Holy Spirit in this way. I don't even understand. I'm like, I don't understand how I was living. I don't understand how I was acting. I don't understand how I was thinking. I don't understand how I was talking. I don't understand how I was doing anything in line with God outside of the Holy Spirit or outside of knowing him this way. Because every single person in here, if you are a believer, if you are born again, you have the Holy Spirit. For believers are only identified by the Holy Spirit, which I'll talk more about uh, uh, in, in the coming weeks, about how when we are born again, it is the Holy Spirit within us that identifies us with other believers. However, there is a second installment of the Holy Spirit that comes where you must actually receive him and be baptized by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is within you. However, when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit, just as you're baptized in water, you go under and you're submerged, right? Your body is submerged. It is a sign of I am, so, I am dying with Christ. My flesh is being crucified to raise up and walk in the newness of life that I have in Christ Jesus. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, it is this inward submerge, submergence that happens where now as you're baptized inside, it's like the flood, the living water of the Holy Spirit begins to submerge your whole being, but it comes from within. So it comes from your spirit and it begins to flood out into your mind and into your thoughts. It floods out into your attitude and your actions. It floods out into your your feelings and your personality and your emotions. It floods out into your hands, into your eyes, into your mouth. It floods out and therefore you are baptized. Even when you, let me say this real quick. I didn't say this in the 8 a.m., but let me, even real quick with speaking in tongues. We've made, I, I literally just learned this this week, and I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so good. But I learned that with speaking in tongues, it's not just this super spiritual, like, okay, we're speaking in tongues, and all the stuff that comes with it. Someone, I was listening to a minister, and they were relating this to a story that they had heard of a father and his daughter, and a father was teaching his daughter how to pray. And he would, you know, tell the daughter, okay, say, Lord, Lord, I thank you, I thank you, da-da-da, and they're praying, and, she, and he was teaching her how to pray. So then one night, he's like, okay, I'm going to let her pray on her own. I'm going to let her pray, and I'm going to kind of, you know, stand behind the door and listen to see how she's doing. And so he listens, and she's in her room going, A, B, C, D, E. And she's singing the alphabet. And so he's like, okay, that's cute, but she's not really praying. We'll try it again, and we'll try it again the, uh, tomorrow night. And so he tries it again, and he stands behind the door, and he's listening. And there she is again, A, B, C, D, E, F, singing the alphabet. So finally he comes in, and he goes, sweetie, it's so cute that you're singing the alphabet, but that's not, that's not praying. And she said, what do, you mean, what do you mean, Dad? I'm singing the alphabet and letting God rearrange the letters. When I heard that, I was like, oh, hold up a second. 
So when we pray in tongues, we're just letting whatever letters and words come out and letting God form it to his will, letting the Holy Spirit orchestrate the words that are being said, letting the Holy Spirit intercede on our behalf. This is some powerful stuff. Oh, I want you to just shoot your heads up in the air and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Come on, this is some good stuff. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. It's so good. See, this is, you know, Christianity is a lot easier with the Holy Spirit. It's hard without him. Trust me, it can be hard without the Holy Spirit because when people look at it, it's not easy. But it's not easy because people look at the external rather than the internal. When you have the Holy Spirit, you're, mm, you now live, this is so good, you now live life from the inside out rather than the outside in. It's you're completely flipped. So now it doesn't matter what your circumstance is. It doesn't matter what your situation is. It doesn't matter what's happening on the outside. You yourself, you remain stable, steadfast, standing, having done all to stand because of what is on the inside of you. And that is the Holy Spirit. You begin to be steadfast, immovable in the work of the Lord because you know who he is. You know who God is. The Holy Spirit reveals the character of God. God will never leave you nor forsake you. God is with you. He is for you. And if God is for you, who or what can be against you? Somebody shout amen if you're believing this right now. Hallelujah. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. See, this is why I wrote the book, No Bad Days, that I did. Life is good because God is good. When you get a revelation of the Holy Spirit who's on the inside of you, he reveals the character of God, that God is unchanging in all of his ways. If God is good, then he is good at every single moment, no matter what is happening within your life. My life can never be bad. I can never have a bad day because my God is always good. And to say for a second that something is bad is to contradict the character of God. And the Holy Spirit will convict you to never contradict the character of God. So, so, so powerful. Hallelujah. Something else that I learned about the Holy Spirit is I learned to sit with him. The Holy Spirit spoke to me one time to sit with him. To sit means to linger in his presence. God says, those who linger, I will entrust the secrets of my heart. That's actually where the song So Good came out of that we just sang today and that I released. I can literally, I can literally let you hear the actual recording of me sitting in my room, having a moment with God, beginning to sing that unto him, where it just came spontaneously of me learning to sit with him. Something else I learned about the Holy Spirit is I have learned how the Holy Spirit speaks. If you want to know God's voice, you must know his word. When you know his word, you will know his voice. I found that out when I was sitting up here at this altar, laid out prostrate on my face, and I began to ask God. I said, God, I don't know, Holy Spirit, I don't know if you're talking to me. I don't know if it's my thoughts. How do I decipher between the two? And he said, Maddie. when you know my word, you will know my voice because I speak nothing but my word. For I am the Lord thy God, I change it not. Everything that I have to say to you can be found in my word. It can be found in him. I also learned that the Holy Spirit talks a lot. He talks a lot. I started developing a habit, which I need to get back into, of sitting in the mornings and having a journal and a pen and saying, Holy Spirit, speak to me. And as soon as I felt the impression that what was going through my mind was God, I would start to write having no idea what I was writing after that because he was moving so fast. And page would turn and page would turn and page would turn. And here I am still writing. And I'm sitting there like, you still going? I'm like, this is just a lot. I'm like, can, I, can you give my hand a break? And I feel like if I give my hand a break, then I'm going to miss it. He's going to be like, okay, I'm done. I'm like, no, 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 come back, come back. <laughs> like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. <laughs> I would always do that. I'd be like, come on, ready, come on, ready, come on, come on, hand, come on, don't cramp, don't cramp. Because I'm like, I want to get it. But he talks so much. I would actually encourage you to do that. That's actually, that's a practical way to see the Holy Spirit revealed that I actually got a lot out of. And this is really helpful too. I don't want to get into that. But it's, it's very helpful just even for your life with you needing a word from God. People will travel thousands of miles to go to a, prof a prophet to get a word from them on their life. Yeah, I'm the very voice of God sitting within you. So if you sit for a moment and you say, Holy Spirit, speak to me, he will. 
Because God doesn't hold anything back from you. He is called to speak to you. He is called to reveal the secrets and mysteries of the Father. So I would encourage you to do that. If you need a, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you need a word from God, sit with the Holy Spirit and get a word. Don't do that, and then you're ignoring him. This is why, this is why we don't have that close relationship with him, because we ignore him. We don't want to go through the process of, of sitting with him. So we'd rather ignore him and act like he's not there because we have to now be patient in his presence to wait for our flesh to subside with all his distractions and really lock in with him. Little things to write down. This is so, so good. So, so good. The Holy Spirit, he speaks through his word. He speaks affirmation and encouragement. If it's positive and godly, it's him. If it's negative and worldly, it's not him. He speaks also based on our relationship with him. So the more intimate we are with him, the more intimate he is with us. This is why we want to desire intimacy with God. This is why it says everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to you by getting to know personally and intimately with the Holy Spirit. Our, our, way, our, our, yeah, our way into intimacy with God is through the Holy Spirit. We are in a friendship, a relationship, and partnership with the Holy Spirit. He is working through us, and we are working through him to please the Father. This is abiding in Christ. This is when the Bible talks about when you abide in him and I in you, that him and you and you and him. That's what it means. That's the oneness with God. That's the intimacy that you have with him. He works through us, and he works in us, and we're working through him. It's, it's, this, is why, this is why this series is called The Holy Spirit Revealed, because I can say so much, and we hear so much, but it's when he actually reveals himself that it clicks, and that it's like, oh, my gosh, I get it, because he's the great revealer. Greater than any preacher, any teacher, any pastor, any evangelist, anybody. He is the greatest teacher. He is the greatest revealer. He's the greatest convictor. He's, the, he's just the greatest counselor. He is the greatest. So I pray also that as you're receiving this this morning, that you take time with the Holy Spirit. This is going to be very practical in the sense of when you hear this, you got to go apply it quickly or you're going to forget it. The devil's going to steal that faith that you have to believe it, and then you won't walk it out. Go home tonight and spend time with the Holy Spirit. Something else that I learned is that he is the source of my life. In Romans 8 verse 2, it says, Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives us life has set you free from the law of sin and death. The Spirit of life sets us free from the law of sin. The Holy Spirit says he is the source of life. Everything in my life, it comes from him. We are nothing without the Holy Spirit. We are absolutely nothing without the Holy Spirit. We can never be the Christians that we need to be without the Holy Spirit. You will never be the husband or wife you need to be without the Holy Spirit. You will never be the parent, the child, the coworker, the boss, the employee. You will never be anything without the Holy Spirit. He is our life. In the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. He sets us free from all the sin that easily besets us from living the life that God has for us. When we come to know Jesus, it is no longer our nature to sin. We have overcome sin by the blood of the lamb. So it is no longer our nature. So anytime you go outside of now your born again nature, the Holy Spirit is the one that comes to bring you back and set you free from what the devil is trying to get you bound up in again. Sin is no longer our nature, and you have to know that because the enemy, and I'll say this quickly, but the enemy will try to condemn you and get you off track and get you to think that it's you. You've been born again. That's not you. The old man has passed away. You are a new creation in Christ. You have overcome sin by the blood of the lamb. This is why you've got to put your faith in the Holy Spirit that he's going to be the one to bring you into the fullness of what God has for you. He will be the one to help you resist sin. He will be the one to help you walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Somebody shout amen. Amen. This is the Holy Spirit. As I get ready to wrap up, Sierra. Every single day we make choices 
Our choices either include the Holy Spirit or they don't include the Holy Spirit. The more we include the Holy Spirit, the more we grow in our intimacy and friendship with him. I started confessing something very recently that I want to share with all of you that I believe is going to help you. Before I share those, I want to put these books on the screen real quick so that way you can get these resources. It's also going to be put on Realm. But I had some resources put on the screen. These are three books that shaped my encounters with the Holy Spirit. One, The Holy Spirit by John Bevere. That book is so engaging, it makes you have encounters with the Holy Spirit. Literally, John Bevere makes you sit there, close your eyes, and have moments with the Holy Spirit. And I did. I would have visions with the Holy Spirit. I would have encounters with the Holy Spirit. I would see things in the Spirit. And I don't share all those things sometimes because people don't have the faith to even hear some of those things. So I don't share it, but it happened. That other second one there, Mornings with the Holy Spirit by Jennifer LeClaire, that's going to help you in the mornings to get into the habit of engaging the Holy Spirit. That's a good one. And then the Carriers of Glory by David Deger Hernandez is going to help you further understand the friendship of the Holy Spirit. So let me give you these last confessions that's going to be practical for you to do every single day to begin your journey of being with the Holy Spirit and walking with him. Say these confessions when you wake up. Holy Spirit, I choose to love you. I choose to be intentional in my relationship with you. I choose to be mindful of you. I choose to acknowledge you. I choose to invite you, invite him into your day, for he delights in every detail of your day. It says that in Psalms. I choose to include you, Holy Spirit. You are included in every decision that I make, every single thing that I say, everything that I do. You are included. You have the final word. I choose to talk to you. That was one of the difference makers for me is learning just to talk to God. Because anytime you get distracted, you get caught up in sin, you fell into temptation, you run off here and you run off there, the first thing you do is you stop talking to God. That's right. The Holy Spirit told me as long as you get back, as long as you are in the place of talking to me, you're fine. Because that means we're in communion. And if you're talking to me, I can talk to you. And if I can talk to you, then I can break you through. Somebody shout amen. Come on. <laughs> Also confess, I choose to think about you. Real quick, I'm just trying to give you a little practical thing. Something that I started doing and I do this to this day. I have not stopped doing this. I verbally, anytime my mind is trying to move on to something that's negative, something that's against God's word, something that's, uh, that doesn't line up with what God's word says, I say, I take every thought captive and I make it obedient to Christ. I cast down every imagination that exalts itself above the word of God. I say this verbally to keep my mind on him. What you're going to learn throughout these weeks is even having just a greater consciousness of God. Where you're just more aware of God. And a lot of times as Christians, we don't think about God until Sunday morning or maybe when we woke up or go to bed and say, Whoo, God, that was a long day. God wants you to be, the Holy Spirit wants you to be conscious of him at every moment. He longs to be a part of your life. He longs to be a part of every detail of your life. And lastly, say, I choose to listen to you when he speaks, because he will. And say, I choose to obey you. Because the more you obey, the more he will freely press into you because he knows that you're open to it.